What is up? What's up? What's up? To all you on the replay, how's it going, guys? It is a random Tuesday night. Hope you're all doing well. Not sure if you guys were watching Smallmouth Crush or Bateman streaming tonight, but hope you're doing well. Whatever you're doing tonight, I got a package to unbox and wanted to do it with you guys. So thought I uh, would hop in here. I still got my my collared shirt on from the day. What's going on, guys? Make myself a little uh, adult beverage. Riley, got that notification. I did not warn anybody that I was going to hang out for a little bit tonight. So good to see you in here. Hope you're doing well, Riley. How's your night going? Five people already in here. Six people, three thumbs up. How are you guys doing? J-Dog. How you doing, man? Let me get a pair of scissors to open this package. Roosevelt Brooks, greetings to you as well, sir. Or ma'am. All right. So, my, uh, turns out, sir, says Roosevelt Brooks, I told you guys I was going to go fishing on Friday, and that's why the giveaway is set to end on Friday. Turns out that fishing trip got canceled because the people who own the property said that the, the flows are too low and the quality of the fishing is just not quite up to par. For them to feel comfortable opening it up to the public. We were going to have it on the first day that it's open. Which is awesome because the fish won't at all be conditioned to seeing flies or being caught. But unfortunately, they're not going to have the property open by Friday. So my wife had made a trade to get off of uh, work on Friday. So she's working tonight, and uh, and I thought I would open this package with you guys. This is from Outdoor Pro Shop, at, a.k.a. MonsterFishingTackle.com. Not sure if you can see that, but Outdoor Pro Shop. I actually included a link in the description of this video, guys. Um, I signed up and got an affiliate link, so you can click that. And if you end up making any orders there, I make a small commission, uh, which isn't the end of the world um, either way. But I figured I might as well sign up. And honestly, that uh, these deals are incredible. You guys are going to be pretty pumped to see what is in here and what else there is on the site. So I highly recommend that you click that link. Go check out some of their stuff, fill up a cart, maybe make a purchase, maybe don't, doesn't bother me, but um, just wanted to make you guys aware, you know, that's the reason I work with Discount Tackle in the first place, is just, it was the best place that you could find Z-Man baits and a lot of other soft plastics and other baits that I would buy on a regular basis, so I figured while I was at it, already buying stuff there, I might as well work with them uh, since the opportunity presented itself. So that kind of came up with Outdoor Pro Shop, but not really. You can Anybody can sign up for the affiliate program there. It's really simple. So I went ahead and did that. So I've got a little box of goodies. I think I only spent like 60 bucks on this. And it's striking and Savage Gear like we talked about last time. So pretty cool deal. Let's get right into it. I'll start with the striking stuff since it takes up a lot less room in this package. And again, these were like cheaper than I've seen anywhere online recently. First are the striking rage punch bugs. These were new at iCast last year. And I have a pack of these in the summer craw color. 
but got a pack in the green pumpkin. Really standard color. That's not green pumpkin, that's blue craw. And it's crazy because I can see that on camera, but not as well in my hand, just in this lighting. So, blue craw. And what you can see is the body on this punch craw is super fat. But it's actually the ribbing more so than the body. So it holds a flipping hook quite well. Or you can text pose an EWG style hook in there really well. It's going to move a lot of water. It's going to produce a lot of bubbles, um, a bubble trail as it moves through the water. And it doesn't have a lot of side appendages to get it hung up. So it's a good punch bait, good Texas rig bait. And uh, I think it would be good on a Tokyo rig as well. So I just think it's an interesting profile. thought I would get an extra pack of the Rage Punch Bugs because those were like, I don't know, $4.50 or something like that. So got a pack of those. Also got a pack of the Rage Tail Baby Bugs. And um, I've told you guys before, I don't like the way that these are packaged. See, these don't come in clamshells at all. It just comes in this guy right here, and they're all smashed up. So it's entirely possible that some of these are going to be a little goofed up straight out of the pack. But I will fix these. Uh, not a big deal. Got these in green pumpkin, not blue craw if I'm not mistaken. And uh, these come nine to a pack. And again, I think these also same price were like 450. So at 50 cents a bait, thought I would scoop some of these up. Great, small, uh, finesse, almost micro jig trailer. I've shown you, I've got this one rigged up on the Bitsy Bug by Strike King. And I even trimmed that down just a, a hair, but really, really like that profile. So got one in green pumpkin. I've got a lot of the Bitsy Bugs, actually. Have kind of a box of them, if you will. So what I can do is just take one of these guys. It's got a red head on it. Or I can grab one of these guys. This is actually a blue craw colored bitsy bug. And a lot of these other ones have like a watermelon colored head on it. But I'll put the the green pumpkin. Baby bug right on there, and that will match up quite well. So, awesome little finesse jig trailer there. I've kind of gone back and forth about what I use for trailers on those bitsy bugs. I've been throwing a lot of like the the baby rage menace grub for the last year or two. Like I've mentioned before, the Kitech Crazy Flapper and the 2.8. And the uh, pit boss in the three inch, the baby pit boss. So there are other options, but when this came out last year at ICAST, um, of course I was intrigued because I've been throwing the regular for a number of years and the Magnum for the last year or two since it came out. So really like the Magnum. Really like the regular. I figured I would really like the baby. So just kind of slowly getting one black and blue, one green pumpkin. Slowly growing my stock. Um, did the same thing with the Striking Rage Ned Bug. Now I think these ones were cheaper and like $3.99 a pack. And it's crazy how the color can vary from bait to bait because of the mold. But this is black blue swirl. So 
This one has a lot more black in it than this one. This one has a lot more blue swirl in it and less black, but really narrow Ned profile, much more buoyant bait than that baby rage bug, but somewhat similar bait in terms of length and overall crawfish profile. Uh, but this is a much lighter bait and meant for a Ned rig, whereas that baby rage bug is more of a baby Texas rig and baby jig trailer. So a little bit different presentations here. I would even throw this baby rage Ned bug on a drop shot. So that black blue swirl color is awesome. Green pumpkin is awesome. So another green pumpkin bait. This one is not super, super exciting. But I talked about it recently, and I posted a picture, I think today, on green or on um, Instagram of the coffee tube. And coffee tubes are super high quality, smell great, have to smell them. They come eight to a pack. They're three and a half inch tubes, standard size, uh, really durable, made well, and um, and they're priced affordably. So found these for a really good deal at you know three bucks a pack for a pack of eight and then a pack of heads to go with those which let's see if i can dig these up so these are the strike king tour grade tube jig heads in the quarter ounce size these come with a gamakatsu hook in them that's mostly what makes them interesting these come four to a pack and like i said they were on sale for just like two bucks a pack so for 50 cents a head i will do that all day long this comes with a light not quite medium wire hook on there and i think a 60 degree line tie nice little tube jig head uh, what i showed today in my post was uh, putting a squadron head the swim bait head up in the tube has a somewhat similar line tie angle and uh, just bulges the head of the bait a little bit. I sometimes will do that when I don't have two jig heads like these, but when I can find these on the cheap, like $2 a pack, like they were at Outdoor Pro Shop, definitely going to scoop some up. So probably uh, need to get more than just the one pack, but quarter ounce is probably my most common size that i would throw ryan what is going on this evening how are you doing tonight you say what's going on everyone but i think it's only you riley and roosevelt at the moment it's not very crowded in here so uh i'm just doing a quick unboxing with you guys showing you my package from outdoor pro shop and uh sharing with you guys the smoking deals that i got real quick wanted to hang out a little late night before uh before i go to bed but Thought I'd check in, see how you guys are doing. Hope you're well, Ryan. So that is almost the end, but this is probably what I'm most excited about since I didn't already have any of these. And that is the 5.75 inch Rage Swimmer. Alex Rosenland, what's going on? So the 5.75 inch Rage Swimmer is a new size, and um, this has been like probably my favorite size Kitek to throw in the last year. Electric Shad has been my favorite color Rage Swimmer at all sizes, but I've tried to go away from the 2.8 inch and start throwing the 3.3 a whole lot more in its place. Still throw the 3.8 as a trailer a lot of the time, the 4.8 as a standalone, and now they've got the 5.8, 5 5.75 as they say. And this guy is sweet. So compare that up with a jig head, something like this guy. This is a six cents divine swim bait head believe this is five aught and three eighths 
and it'll look something like this. Voila. So, really like this bait here. Um, I'll let you know what it weighs by itself. It is just a standard Rage Swimmer, although I will say the ribs are almost more like a Kitek than a Rage Swimmer. What I've found that make a Rage Swimmer different than a Kitek are that the ribs face forward, and that is not as much the case with this 575. So 0.82 ounces or 23 grams on its own. So relatively heavy bait there. Um, where did I just put the pack? Let's see um, if another one in the pack has a slightly different look to it or not. And no, quite honestly, it does not look like the ribs are facing forward. I'll make a separate video about this at another time, guys. But look at this up close. Can you see the ribs? They're like straight, in my opinion. I could be just seeing it wrong in this light. But traditionally, that is much more noticeable at smaller sizes. Golly, what's going on here? All right. Sorry, I wanted to show you guys at a smaller size just what it looks like. Oh. So. Like here's the 3.8, for example. Can you see that the ribs are really like pointed at an angle? That is less prominent or so it seems in the 5.75 inch but it's not going to change the swim much in my opinion quite honestly I, that's just part of what they say is different between it and the Kitek. i think it's going to be a very similar you know it reminds me a lot of this Kitek 6.8 inch just in terms of like what the ribs feel like the consistency of the plastic, of course, is just a little bit different between Kitek and Strike King. And I actually like the, the feel of Strike King and the smell of Strike King on my fingers when all is said and done, right? While I think Kitek gets bit, boy, does it stink. It's like power bait, you know. Some people don't even fish with power bait because they think the the smell is so obnoxious. They don't want it on them. Neil Gray, what's going on, man? Hope you're doing well. Riley says caught two on the jackhammer, one on the June bug Ned rig, and four on a popping frog. Sounds like a great day, Riley. Congratulations. Brian Waterman, what's up? How are you doing, man? Yeah, Riley, Berkeley Maxent is wicked. That stuff, you like open the bag. You don't want to get that on your fingers. Uh, you know, if I'm grabbing stuff, I'm, I'm being extra careful with that. That is just disgusting. So I think we went through all of, I actually got swim bait heads to go with 
these swim baits. I'll go ahead and rig one up while you guys are on here just so you can see what it looks like. And because I want to fish it soon. But um, again, this is the Strike King Rage Swimmer in the 5.75 inch size in the electric shad color. Pretty nice, eh? Consistency of the plastic seems legit. It seems like it's poured well. I purchased the squadron head in the three quarter ounce. This is a five aught hook, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So what we're gonna do is line it up. First of all, to see how much of the head I need to take off. And that is not very much. So just going to bite it off. Not super even, but you know, that's how it goes, right? Salty. Okay. Shouldn't try to fix it. Makes it worse. Now, I'm going to line her up, see where she's going to come out. And in my opinion, that is about a little past halfway. So, thread this baby on. Now, that was pretty tough plastic, if you ask me. Not sure if any of you are asking me. Okay, might have been a little too far, but let's see. Push it up on there, and yeah, definitely too far. So here's the thing. First time I went in, started ripping up the insides. I don't want to do that. Okay, so I got this on there pretty good. And push that up over the keeper. And she's on there. Check that out, guys. I mean, 5.75 inch reed swimmer on a three quarter ounce squadron head. This guy's going to be right at a, an ounce and a half. 43 grams. What is that? What is 43 grams? Is that an ounce and a half? 1.55. So, yeah, that's a uh, that's a nice little morsel there. Very medium wire hook there. Should get bit quite nicely. So just put a little dab of super glue on there. Boom. And you're good to go for a day of fishing. That right there should catch you a half a dozen nice fish. And um, that thing's going to thump well. Imitate a nice six inch bait fish. And I like it. So these were on sale as well. And I want to say they were on sale also for. $3.99 a pack, and these come four to a pack. So that was a good deal to check them out. And even if they were uh, $4.79, you know, the slightly more expensive, worth a check out for sure. This is a new bait, new size. I like the Rage Swimmer in general. So happy to try the big size. Now, it's not like I'd never thrown this size, right? Like, I pretty much always have one of the Kitex rigged up, but anyway. Just let that dangle right there for now. Let's move on. That's all the Strike King I got, but 
I got a ton of Savage Gear stuff like we talked about. Looks like I'm missing some comments. Something about Jack being in here. Uh, okay, reeling in bass. What's going on, man? Jack is the name. Well, yeah. Jack, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the crew. Hope you're doing well tonight. Brian Waterman says, was looking to get that Shimano SLX spinning rod. Seven foot medium light. Loads at 1 16th to 5 16th. Will cast some lures. I struggle casting. Absolutely. That sounds like a pretty, pretty good rod right there. Have you ever used the Optimum ba Baby line through swim bait? Not the line through. Um, you know, I've been on the fence about it a couple times, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm just a little bit um, intimidated or weirded out by the shape of that bait, uh, where just how bulbous the head is and where the weight is. So, no, I haven't. I haven't used that bait yet. I have no opinions on it. So, thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well tonight, Aaron. First up, Savage Gear five inch. 3D bluegills. So uh, these are both in the slow sink. Got one in the light gill. You can see that's got an orange belly, green back, and one in the dark gill, which has a little bit more purple in it. And I'm going to open the dark gill right now to show you guys what this bait looks like. What did Ray just hop in here? Ray's not going to show up, is he? Reeling in bass. Jack says I'm using a $15 Zebco combo. LOL. You don't have to laugh at yourself, man. No big deal. Got to start somewhere. So, 5-inch 3D bluegill. This is pretty big bait right here, guys. Um, I have this in the 4-inch, and I showed you guys recently what it looks like. It's a much more manageable bait. Right? Like, look, here's the 4-inch. Here's the 5-inch that I'm talking about right now. Substantially bigger. So, I've I've always liked that 4-inch, but I've never, never thought to get the 5-inch. This guy sells for $15. And on Outdoor Pro Shop is on sale for five bucks right now. So this thing weighs two ounces and uh, is not a light bait, right? So you throw this on a heavy act heavy power rod, it's going to load it up pretty good. Um, you'd be better off throwing this on a dedicated swim bait rod, though you could throw it on like a, a frog and or flipping stick. So, two ounces. This is the, what did I say, dark gill? Yeah, and this one's the light gill. So, I'm not going to open both right now just because it does kind of crack the packaging. Um, looks like it does come with a nail weight in the package that would allow you to Place the weight in, I think, the belly of the bait. So, either way, pretty cool deal there. Um, and a pretty legit bait. So, it's priced at $15 for a reason. And for $5, I would say that it's worth a shot. So, picked up two of them. And I figured I was going to give one away during next month's spawn giveaway. You know, this month I gave away a dark sleeper as the the bluegill swim bait imitator and i think next month i'll give away a, a big five inch savage gear bluegill what do you guys think about that all right 
whose birthday was it? Alex Rosenland. You turned 13 yesterday. Happy birthday, Alex. We didn't even know we had somebody in here younger than Riley. And then next thing we know, we've got Jack in here. We've got Alex. Um, we had BJ's son, Brody, who's nine last time. So I didn't realize there was uh, some folks in here even younger than Riley. So pretty cool, guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Next bait on the list is the Savage Gear 8-inch uh, 3D floating trout. This is, is this a line through? Yes, it is. 3D line through trout. Again, this is a bait that retails at like $18 or something like that. And was on sale for $8. They had it in two sizes at this price. And this is the ghost trout. You won't be able to see in this lighting, but this thing is like translucent. Um, pretty dang clear. And that's actually really cool. I like that a lot. And um, so, can't tell what it says on here. Savage Gear 20. Maybe that means um, 20 centimeters and 8 inch. And then on the other side, yeah, 20. So it's got a hook on top, which sits in this, this chamber. And um, you run your line through and it comes up the top. You tie your, your hook on and then set it in the top, kind of Butch Brown style. And it allows you to then fish this bait in much more gnarly cover and along the bottom and not get hung up where you traditionally would with a treble on bottom. So pretty cool deal. And then once the fish bites, treble hook um, separates from the bait just like happens with all line through baits. And, um, and the fish doesn't have the leverage of the bait to throw the hook so really high quality feeling bait here um you know 18 dollars is pretty expensive for a purely soft plastic bait but when it's on clearance for eight dollars i'm definitely trying it so eight ounces or eight inches and something like three ounces yep eight inches three ounces and uh line through 3d Trout from Savage Gear. Should have gotten two of those, to be honest, but just got one. Then I got two of the bats. We talked about this, guys. This is the 3D bat. Have you heard of this? This is a crawler style lure, but it's called the 3D Bat. This is the middle size. They make them in a 3 inch, a 4 inch, and a 5 inch. Brian Waterman, 36. I'm an old man. <laughs> That's kind of what it makes me feel like. I'm 32. Um, no old is 70, says Rodney. <laughs> Jack, you can ask anybody a question. How should I grow my channel? I have 37 subs and I only have a phone. Uh, you should post what you can, dude. But that is a, a good question. It just depends on what it is that you make for content and what you're trying to um to put out there for other people right so for me i like learning i like teaching and i know that there's people out there looking to learn so i might make a, a video or two about this bait because there's probably people out there looking to see this bait up close and know what it's all about this is the savage gear 3d bat and it has wings that come out the side these are metal on the four and five inch. On the smaller three inch, these are plastic wings. 
but I know they have a tendency to bend and uh, need to be bent back into place. So decided to get the bigger ones with the metal wings. As you can see, it's got a super feathery treble hook on the rear and a standard treble hook on the middle. So two pretty substantial, I'd say size two treble hooks. I, I can check the packaging to see if it says, and then a very realistic bat looking face on there. So as it's swimming, this thing crawls through the water and makes a racket. As you can hear, it's got a pretty loud rattle in there. So this is the four inch bait. Normally would sell for about uh, $20 retail. Guess how much I paid for it? $4. Yeah, that's right. Four bucks. So I happen to look at the bigger size as well. They have it in the five inch. This guy retails for like $25. It's actually not that heavy, this five inch. This is two ounces, the big size. This is a huge bait um, in width. Like this is the size of my hand, pretty much. Um, also has a pretty loud rattle. This is the gray color, so it has a black feather treble, more of a white belly. And um, slightly bigger hooks. So again, this one retails for a little bit more, but was on sale for the same price at $3.99. So I got two bat lures in this order where I never, ever thought that I would be throwing a bat lure. And uh, now I've got two in my arsenal. So pretty weird. Um, and that's all because Ray suggested I check out these awesome deals on Outdoor Pro Shop. There's just one thing left in this box. One thing left, and that is the Savage Gear Smash Tail. This is essentially the Whopper Plopper made by Savage Gear. They charge about the same amount, um, something in the 15 to 20 bucks a bait. This is the 135 size, I think. Yeah. Smash Tail Minnow 135. So closest to the Whopper Plopper 130. And pretty similar in weight. It's one and a quarter ounces. This is the, the perch color, yellow perch. And seems like a pretty good bait. I figured it would be just at full retail price. There's no chance I'm paying that. I guess it's got some weight. You can see that little metal ball in the tail itself. So it weighs that tail down and makes the plopping that much louder. Uh, but just like the Whopper Plopper, this is made of a, um, a moldable plastic. Um, unlike the Chapo, which is a hard plastic, which could be cracked or easily broken off. Um, this is a softer plastic, which could be melted or molded a lot more easily. See, I can, I can fold that with my fingers pretty easily. It's even a little softer than the Whopper Plopper tail. And then it's got all these fins on it, which again, um, are about as stiff as the tail. Very realistic here. I like that, that top. Reminds me of the, uh, The S waiver, but um, anyway, or um, not the S waiver, the uh, the Shine Glider. So very realistic bait, as is typical of of Savage Gear, and that is the Smash Tail One Thirty Five. Look forward to throwing this bait, and again, I think I paid something like seven dollars for this bait. Let me tell you guys right now. So, yeah, those wraps were $4 a piece. 
The bluegills were five dollars a piece. The trout was eight bucks, and the plopper was seven bucks. So I couldn't help it. I I wanted to get two or three of all of those things, to be honest with you. And then, like I said, the uh, the baby rage bugs were four seventy nine, and oh, those the rage swimmers were four seventy nine. Okay, so I was wrong on those. The uh, the baby rage or the rage Ned bugs were four bucks a pack, and the rage punch bugs were four bucks a pack. Those are crazy deals because those baits cost six ninety nine anywhere else, and so for three ninety nine to see them um, anywhere is like absurd. Like they've got the prices wrong on their website, and then they're discounting them from there. Um, Outdoor Pro Shop says that they discount all Strike King products 20% off. And so some some of their products, like those new uh, soft plastics that were released last year at ICAST, are priced incorrectly and then discounted 20% off. So I decided to take advantage just ever so slightly. Just a couple of them, right? Like I said, the, the Rage Punch Bugs, $3.99 a pack. And the Rage Ned Bugs. Three ninety nine a pack. Awesome deals there. Um, I couldn't help but also pick up some some baby rage bugs and some tubes because those were cheap. The tubes were three bucks. The tube heads were two bucks. So um, awesome deals, guys, from Outdoor Pro Shop. I I did leave a get out of here, Ray. BJ showed up ten minutes ago. And Ray just showed up. <laughs> yeah, Ray, you're super late, man. BJ, you got your package from me yesterday? Can't wait to try some of them. Awesome. Good to hear, man. Glad to hear that you got the package. It makes me happy. So, Ray, you're going to have to... Uh, you were in fish the moment today for a moment, trolling him. Did he do a live stream today or something? What do you mean you were trolling him? Be nice now, Ray. Gosh, guys, I'm starting to make a huge mess in here. Oh, it bugs me. But... I know I just had this up for like five minutes, but let me show you one more time. I think this bait is gorgeous. Might as well just put it in my little plopper box if I can fit it. Which is rude to the other ploppers, but got to do what you got to do. Man, I could have sworn I had a... A perch plopper in one in the one ten size. Now I will say that's interesting. Check this out. So here's the whopper plopper in the one thirty, right? Here's the savage gear. Just below it. Now, watch what happens when I flip them on their side. The Savage Gear is much thinner, and the Whopper Plopper is fat. Interesting. The Whopper Plopper is just a chubby cigar all the way around, right? I think we're kind of used to that body. And the Chapo is mostly that, a little bit more shaped, uh, hole shaped, if you will. But this. The Savage Gear is actually narrow, um, more like a bait fish than anything. Look at that. Very interesting. So I wonder how that's going to affect performance on the water. Stability. You would think this is going to roll less and be more stable in the water. And they make this smash tail in a one. 70 I was I was kind of tempted to get that size instead of the 135 just because it was less than ten dollars too but anyway this was more relatable 
for doing like a comparison or a side by side and really being able to to give it a fair chance. Now this is a pretty big bait. Um, and I, I don't know that I can fit it in my Whopper Plopper box. So, I'll have to figure this out another time. On goes the mess that is my taco room. So, Jack says... I'm hoping I can bring my boat out to the River Creek thing. BJ says, hey, everybody hit that thumbs up. BJ's a nice guy. There are 19 people in here and 13 thumbs up, though. So, hey, guys, hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment on the side in the chat. Let us know that you're here, who you are, if you're not already participating. Looks like a lot of the regular crew is in here tonight. Riley is asking, did someone say Berkeley Chapo? I did, but was kind of talking smack about it when I mentioned it. Uh, I do like the Chapo, and I want to get one in the 120 ASAP. It's going to be probably on my list for next month at Discount Tackle um, of things to get. I'm going to start buying things for the post bond, start thinking about Topwater just a little bit. You know, now that I allowed myself to buy this bait, and why do they do this with the treble hook on the back? That's going to give the fish a little bit of leverage. This is like the opposite of the new Savage Gear trebles that they just came out with. Have you seen those trebles, which just allow you to, to twist like 10 times around? This, they've just put like some wire on here so that the, the treble can't interfere with the tail. But that, it's a little funky. I'm not sure I like that. Yeah, BJ, there's not, not a real topic tonight. I didn't know that I was going to hop on tonight, and then I was I saw that, Smallmouth Crush had 600 people on his. Baitman had a bunch of people on his. And um, and I wasn't feeling well just two hours ago. So I thought about not even hopping on. And um, and then realized I had this package to open and thought I would see what everybody was up to. Just uh, hopped on. So we don't have like a real, real topic to discuss tonight. We're not going to plow through a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, happy to field questions as you guys have them so if you guys have any questions please leave them in the comments on the side and i will answer as will everybody else uh jack is in here saying i have only like eight lures i have three crankbaits a jig two spinner baits and two lipless crankbaits both pink well jack you know in time your uh your stash will will expand dude no worries Yak Angler 419 says S waiver and light trout sold out because of tactical bass. And yeah, you know, that tends to happen a couple times a year because of tactical bass. And, and uh, so you gotta you just gotta time it right, you know. There's a couple times a year that you can get it for cheap too. Um, but there's that bait right there. I hope to throw this one. A bit more this year. I decided to get one in the yellow perch as well. So just have two of the S waivers. Uh, both in the 168. Once I get used to the bait. And used to throwing uh, slightly heavier baits. Then I might get into throwing the S waiver 200. But, um, but for its price tag. I decided to not get into the 200 game and rather get me a couple Storm or Rashi glides. So just personal preference and, uh, and we'll see how it goes.
Ryan, what did Ray suggest? Uh, I missed something there. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm not not keeping up with you. BJ says, "Hey Tyler, that white bait is it a chatterbait? What white bait are you talking about, brother?" That white bait. BJ, tell me, oh, the one I sent you in the box. Yes, it is, BJ. Uh, it falls into the category, we would call it a vibrating jig, right? The category is vibrating jigs or bladed jigs, but what I sent you is this bait right here. And this is the Terminator shuttering bait. And you see the blade up front, this cup, this plastic blade, will move side to side as you swim the lure. So it's going to push water, and then the bait behind is going to erratically swim in the turbulent water. So this is a pretty erratic bait. Uh, but it's like a, a vibrating swim jig, right? So it's called the shuttering bait. Neil Gray, you got any extras you want to sell? Uh, of the S waiver? No, man. I just got those two and not really looking to sell them. Sorry, dude. S waiver is a must throw on a mono leader. Totally changes the action. I will keep that in mind, Yak Angler. But yeah, I would ordinarily throw my swim baits on uh, on braid to to mono leader. But with that S waiver being as light as it is, I would have considered throwing it on straight fifteen pound fluoro, which I think I have done before. So. Or 17 pound for so interesting to to hear that you say that mono leader totally changes the action on the s waiver so I'll keep that in mind and uh, and try to pay attention to that moving forward What is going on, Riley? One jigs, two flukes, three chatterbaits, four chopo, five poppin' frog. What are you rattling off, Riley? You talking to Jack? What are your top five baits for bass this time of year? Jack asked. Okay, interesting. Alex says, Tyler, what's your favorite bait casting reel? Um what is my favorite bait casting reel? Um, interestingly enough, I would say my favorite one that I've had has been the Quantum Smoke S3. Uh, but there's been a, a couple others that come close. And so far, I am really, really liking the Daiwa Tatula SV. But um, honestly, there's been a lot of reels that I've been pretty satisfied with. So tough to say, um, Alex. But Jack says, what is a bait casting reel under 30 bucks? I can't find any. Yeah, you're not really going to find... A bait casting reel under thirty dollars, dude. I bought a reel about that cheap, forty dollars, uh, when I was pretty new to bait casting equipment. It's the uh, Pissy Fun 
Torrent. Okay, uh, the brand is uh, PC Fun. P I S C I F U N. And um, the the reel is called the Torrent. T O R R E N T. And it's okay, right? But it is like it's big in the hand. It's heavy and bulky. It doesn't hold a lot more line than others. The drag is not substantially better, and it is pretty low quality when it comes to uh, build and materials. I would not recommend, Jack, that, that you spend that little amount of money on a bait casting reel. Uh, the cheapest I would go is whatever a Abu Garcia Black Max costs, something like 50 bucks. Um, that would be about as cheap as I would go. But otherwise, I would go ahead and save up. Um, ask for one for your birthday. Ask for a gift card and spend $100. And between either the Shimano SLX or the Luz Speed Spool LFS, uh, you would be very happy with either one of those. And, uh, and I've got both and like them quite a lot. So keep that in mind. Ray, yeah, I skipped over. What do you, what, what, I don't even know what you were just saying, bro. Sorry, Ray, skipped you. Skipping you, dog. Shake your head all you want. I don't know what to say. Trying to keep up with the comments, and it's tough. Alex says, Tyler, nice. My first reel was the Quantum uh, Escalate. Now I have the Shimano SLX DC. Right on. I've heard pretty good things about the SLX DC, and then um, I wouldn't be surprised if you're if you're happy with that one. SLX DC, Corrado DC. Uh, I've pretty much heard good things about them. I just uh, haven't got into the DC game yet myself, and I pretty much try to keep in the middle price range when it comes to my setups. So most of my reels are in that uh, one to two hundred dollar price point. BJ is trying to tell Jack. He's been asking the same thing uh, about a, a, an affordable but quality bait casting reel. So that's why we suggested the SLX and the Lose Speed Spool LFX. Okay, Jack. Jack says, my birthday's in a month. I think I might get a Cast King Speed Demon. Dude, no. Nothing against Cast King because I think they've stepped up their game a little bit. But um, if you're going to spend that much money, I would jump over. Uh, and switch brands. I would either get a Luz or a Shimano, which are going to be just a little bit more reliable than Cast King in general. Uh, the Speed Demon it gets a lot of hype, and it's a super fast reel, and it's built relatively well. But Cast King's a, a younger, newer, smaller brand, and um, you never know what you're going to get. So, just my two cents. Personal opinion, everybody's got a different opinion, but um, if your budget is right about that, and I think the Speed Demon's right around $100, then I would just jump over and get the Shimano SLX or the Luz Speed Spool LFS. All right, Ray, I'm going to go back up. You were pointing at it. What do you say, man? Who was calling you guys the OG crew? No big deal. You are the OG crew. Ray and Ryan. Riley. BJ. You guys are the OG crew. Since you're getting more followers. What are you? I, I honestly have no idea what you guys are talking about. So let's just not worry about it. You guys are the OG crew. 
You guys get the credit, all right? There's 19 people in here. Everybody should know that Ray and Riley and Ryan, these homies are the bomb. Thick and thin. Getting all big time for you. Yak Angler 419. Classic green right-handed Corrado if you want. It's 10 years old but in good condition. All right. Yeah, right, Ryan. Design my own baits. I'm not going to be working with Z-Man. Man, how cool would that be if Yak Angler 419 and Jack over at Reeling and Bass ended up actually um, exchanging this reel? That is super generous of you to say. Uh, remind us one more time, Yak Angler. What is what's your first name, dude? It's a really nice gesture. Riley, saying the same thing. Gosh, we got good vibes in here, guys. Everybody's just willing to help each other out. Um, really, really like that, guys. Ray says, Tyler, I put it under Ryan's comment that you commented on today. On the last stream. Yeah, I've been a little bit uh, late on commenting, okay? But I do want to go back retroactively and be able to comment on things that I didn't get around to initially. So uh, it's not that I'm getting too big time. It's that I'm, I'm busy, man. I'm on child care duty uh, all the time. So I just I haven't been caught up. I'm way behind when it comes to comments. On, on old videos and new. So I feel bad about that and just wanted to to make sure that everybody was on the same page. But yeah, I did did reply to comments today. Jack is just feeling the vibes right now. Happy you're in here, huh, Jack? Okay, so Yak, did you tell us your name was Quinn? I don't know that, man. But either way, Quinn, my name's Tyler. You probably already know half of everybody else's names already. But um, pleasure to meet you, Quinn. Thank you for, for being such a, a nice guy and, uh, and offering that to Jack. And same with you, Riley. Uh, generous as always. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, so pretty cool. Why don't um, you guys exchange email addresses um, Jack put your email address in the in the comments so that either Quinn and or Riley can get in touch with you and uh, and hook you up with some gear okay Ray says I'm a stay-at-home daddy yeah yeah this is an awesome crew for sure <laughs> J two thousand seven Maine at gmail dot com. All right, Jack. Brian Waterman, do you ever throw a swim jig without a skirt? Jig head with a with a weed guard. I do. Um, occasionally, not very frequently, but um, but sometimes, yeah. I've got a couple heads like this that I like to throw. Um, this is one, and then another one is the um, is a football head, the fantasy football head by Picasso. Forget who makes this one, Blade Runner maybe, but um, but yes, I will sometimes throw a naked swim jig just for a, a different look. And um, and if I am getting caught up in the grass just a little bit more, I find that a naked swim jig 
will work its way through just a little bit easier. But I'll throw a football head sometimes on a swim bait as well without a skirt and, uh, and drag that on bottom for a different presentation as well. What about you, Brian? Do you ever throw a naked swim jig? Ray says, Tyler, uh, Academy bought up all of Six Sense Axis they had in stock. I went yesterday and they're loaded with them. No way, Ray. Hey, Ray. Um, hmm. I would consider buying one or two if, uh, if you would go to Academy and grab a couple. I'll send you some money or send you some baits or, you know, we can work something out. But I would be interested in grabbing a couple. How much did those retail at, Ray? Were they less than 10 bucks or right at $10 a bait? The Axis looks interesting to me for sure. But I just wonder how available it's going to be, how well it's going to sell, and uh, what's going to happen with it. So wouldn't mind getting my hands on one or two uh, sooner than later, especially since they might not be Almost 15 bucks. Interesting. Okay. Seems like a, uh, a pretty wild bait to me. You know, just with, with how that, that bill moves, seems like it might be a little inconsistent with how it swivels. But, uh, but it, it's a cool idea, right? I like what they're thinking uh, to do something that, that nobody else has. So, Alex Rosenland, yeah, uh, this is a, a pretty sweet group we've got in here. You know, I wasn't joking when I said that on the giveaway post the other day. We've got really good vibes in these live streams as of late. Everybody's helping each other out so much. Um, I've sent packages to three or four people already. Uh, and people are sending packages back. People are sending packages to each other. And, um, and we're offering advice out the wazoo. And it's pretty much only good vibes in here. It's really rare that we ever have somebody uh, weird in here. And it's usually when I'm streaming live on Instagram and YouTube that someone on Instagram is acting a fool. But really cool in here. So make sure you got those notifications on. So if you see a live stream pop up, like maybe tomorrow night, for example, then uh, then you'll know to to hop in and and that it'll be a good time. Hey, my wife's calling me from work right now. Let me. Uh, I wish I could. Pause you officially. I'm going to pick up the phone though. Hey. I am. I'm, uh, I'm on with my friends right now on YouTube. What's up? Yeah, what did I say? Yeah, no, I, uh, wasn't feeling good a couple hours ago. I have a stomach bug that is, uh, yeah, seems to be doing better at the moment. But, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. We'll talk about it more later. But now this is on YouTube. So cool. There's 20 people watching this. So I will uh, chat with you later. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Love you, sweetie. All right. Bye-bye. Well, that's fun. Um, so I texted my wife a couple hours ago when, when I was struggling and let her know that, um, so she was calling cause she's worried and I guess she's got a slow night at work right now. So that's embarrassing. So Ryan says, what is the access? The access is a, uh, a new bait from six cents lures, a crankbait with a bill that that rotates it swivels oh what did he say what did I just miss Yeah, Quinn, the email's up there.
All right, Ray, you're going to go tomorrow then? So if you're going to go, then call me when you're there, Ray, and um, and show me or tell me what colors they have. And um, so shoot me an email after this stream, and I'll give you my phone number. You can call me and uh, and tell me what colors they have, and I'll take one. You scoop up one, and uh, and I'll pay you back for it, okay? I could mute myself, Brian. I should have. Could I have? I should, yeah. I, I definitely could have. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Ron Holly in the building. How are you doing, man? We're an hour and 10 minutes in. Um, I don't know how much longer this is going to last, but good to see you in here. So Jack says, I need to go watch Harry Potter with my sister, but I'll be back every 10 or 15 minutes or so. So happy. Thank you, guys. No worries, Jack. And Ron, you don't have to be worried about showing up late. Not a big deal, man. Um, you don't have to be in here live ever. Uh, it's a fun time, though, when you are. So glad to have you. you know, most of the the regular crew is in here tonight. Ray says they had that wicked looking fire tiger one yesterday, but only had one. Looks amazing. I'd hang it on a wall. Yeah, if they have something like that, you know, that tiger truce, uh, something like that, I really like those colors. So uh, call me and let me know what colors they have. I'll look them up uh, if I have to and tell you what color um, I'm feeling because that's the thing about Six Sense. They've got some sweet colors. And I know that they they colored the bills on those baits to uh, to kind of match the color pattern. So love to uh, to be able to make a, a real decision on that. So let me know. Hey guys, there's 17 people in here. 15 thumbs up right now. Do me a favor if you haven't already hit the thumbs up, do that real quick, and um, and let's keep the conversation going for a little bit longer. Ron just got in here, and I feel like. We should chat about some stuff. Um, he didn't get to see any of the unboxing. Ray didn't even get to see the unboxing of the stuff that I bought from the site that he suggested. But really cool stuff. I will just do a quick run through one more time. Ryan says, you should have streamed tomorrow. Haha. <laughs> I'm farming for my buddy tomorrow. Need something to watch while auto steer GPS is driving the spray for me. That's funny. Ray says, Tyler, did you see me? Two for two message above. No, I missed it. Yeah, Ray, I see it. You call me, right? Email me after the stream and then call me. All right, Ray, here's the, the bats, dude. You, you can go back after the stream. We looked at these about a half an hour ago, but I got the big bat in the, the five inch. This is two ounces. And I got the four inch. This is the middle size, and it's one ounce. This one in black, this one in brown. Four bucks a piece, so... I would not throw a crawler style lure ever, but for four bucks a pop, I had to. The five inch 3D bluegill from Savage Gear. Got one in the light gill and the dark gill. Each of these were five bucks a pop. Ordinarily sell for $15. Those bats go for 20 and 25 bucks, but I got them for $4. As we had talked about, that 8-inch line through 3D trout sells for 18 bucks, and I got it for 8 And then the pulse tail minnow, the, or the smash tail minnow in the 135 again, sells for like 17 bucks, and got it for like 7 
Got some Strike King baits. Got the baby Ned Bugs, or the Rage Ned Bugs. The big Rage Punch Bugs. Those both at four bucks a pack. Got some coffee tubes and some tube jig heads for cheap. Got some of the baby rage bugs and the big new size of the rage swimmers in the 5.75 inch size with some swim bait heads to match up with them. And I rigged one up for you guys to see just how big it is and what it looks like. So I got all that stuff for 60 bucks. And um, can't help but just tell you guys how pumped I am about that deal and about the website, OutdoorProShop.com. And would suggest that you guys go check them out, see if there's anything there that you like. And might find uh, worth your while. So, like I said, I left a link in the description of this video that you can go ahead and click. And if you do and you make a purchase from Outdoor Pro Shop, I will make like a, you know, five or six percent commission on. So, every little bit helps and uh, wouldn't mind you clicking that link for me. So, Quinn says, can you guys help me with Jack's email? It didn't show up in my feed. Wow. Quinn, it's J2007, main, M-A-I-N, at gmail.com. Did you get that, Quinn? J2007, M-A-I-N, at gmail.com. That is Jack's email. Get in touch with him. Alex says, Tyler, what soft plastics would you recommend for bed fishing? Um, some like what I've got included in this month's giveaway. I would throw creature baits or craw baits, uh, beaver style baits on like a Texas rig. So like in this month's giveaway, I decided to give away a, a pack of uh, white rage bugs. These right here. I got a pack for myself because I'm going to be throwing this bait. I gave away a pack of the black six inch lizards from Zoom. Which are a classic, you know, just like the, the brush hog. The six inch lizard is a great one. It's a six inch bait. You can throw both of those uh, baits on a four aught. EWG hook. So I gave away EWG hooks. Um, something like this Nest Raider from River to Sea would be a good bait to throw. This is a salamander imitator. Or something to throw in the color white are good bed fishing soft plastics. Okay. Um, you want something that's either going to be uh, realistic and offensive to the bass. Or something that's very bright and um, easy for you, the fisherman, to be able to see. So, Alex, a couple plastics I'm going to throw on a drop shot while bed fishing in the next month or two are these chartreuse. This is the Gary Yamamoto Cocktail Worm. This is the Strike King KVD Half Shell in the siren color. Um, so there's a wide variety of soft plastics that you can throw on a um, for bed fishing, but in general, creatures and craws um, in bolder colors so that you can see when the fish are eating it. A Ned Rig is a great bed fishing bait too, though, and that's why I included the TRD Ticklers in the white color with a pack of the white. EWG Ned Hooks. Um, so, I hope that kind of answers your question, Alex. But Ryan is also correct in saying throw white or pink 
or orange. Craws, finesse worms, beaver baits. Yep, those are all good. And Ray, I'm not getting the bats tested for the Rona. <laughs> yeah, a little uh, raw bat soup. So Riley says, since I'm sponsoring Bass Pro, I get early emails for whatever baits that are sold out and open early emails saying the fire are in store within a week and I get an email a couple hours before they even stock. Interesting, Riley. That could be uh, pretty fruitful. That would be smart of you to, to stock up on those fire craw jackhammers if and when you can because something tells me that they're going to keep selling out for a while even after they come back in stock. Ron says, pull the trigger on that smuggler. It looks, it just looks too crazy trying to swim. Had to get it in the sparrow. Yep. Cool. Thanks for the rundown. Absolutely. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of the bat lure, you know, just being a crawler. So uh, I'd be curious to know what you think of it, Ron, once you actually get it and have a chance to throw it uh, and see it in the water. I'd, I'd be very curious just because I, I don't have the lure, and I, I um, haven't put it on my wish list. Don't have any plans to get it. You know, like this five-inch bat is just so big. I don't even know if it's going to fit in my tackle box alongside the giant rats that I have. So, Ray says, Tyler, I caught my first ever bed bass yesterday, two of them. My man over at Six Cents told me something to try. Didn't have everything, but it worked. Right on, Ray. Good to hear, man. What uh, what did you try, and what ended up working? What were you throwing, and what what was it that that ended up doing the trick for you, man? Because that's super exciting, and congratulations. Um, it's a really exciting thing. You get locked in to that kind of uh, you know, one on one, you versus the fish. Oftentimes, they see you. Uh, they're territorial. They have no intention of eating the bait, but it they're just trying to keep you and whatever you're putting on the bed away, right? And uh, it's really exciting to see the fish and their behavior get more aggressive and see just what it takes and, uh, and finally have the accomplishment of catching that fish and then putting them back on their bed. So good for you, man. Be curious to know how it is that you caught it. Let us know, man. Ryan says he's never bed fished before. Yep. BJ, I like the half shell too, for sure. No problem, Alex. My pleasure. Feel free to ask any questions that you have like that. Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can throw for bed fish too. You know, bluegill swim baits. Swim baits in general are known to be a really good bed fishing lure, not to catch fish, but rather to, uh, to get them fired up. You know, if you're throwing finesse lures or, or craws or jigs or other things in there that uh, are very natural or not very threatening, oftentimes you won't even get the attention of the bedding fish. So sometimes throwing something big in there like a swim bait uh, will get the fish pissed off to where then you can throw something small in there and they will come in and accidentally engulf the entire thing just because. They're already mad. So, something to keep in mind. Ray, have you made that big order yet, says Ryan. Ray says, I tried for three days and nothing. Then I tossed a makeshift sea rig with just a 1 8 ounce bullet weight, a swivel, and an orange bead that I had. Uh, used a four out EWG and a six cents Ned Fry. Interesting. Okay. Sight fishing was almost all I did for Reds in Florida, so it felt like that again almost, and I loved it. Awesome. Well, good for you again, Ray. Congratulations. Super exciting uh, to be able to see them and watch their behavior, depending on what you are doing, how you're working the bait. So, super cool. Rats and bats. Hmm, sounds like trouble to me, says Ryan.
Ron Holly, we just had our lockdown extended to June first. We'll have to watch fishing and videos until then. Brutal. Quinn says we're on lockdown in Illinois, but we have a yak tournament on May fifteenth. It's still on. Weird. Yep. It is a little bit weird. You know, the concept of lockdown is kind of relative, right? Some people are taking it seriously. Some people are not. Ryan says, next week, they're slowly reducing restrictions. It's a four-week plan to start opening things back up. Uh, we have only less than 50 cases in my province. 75% are in the northern part. Wow, that's pretty good, Ryan. <laughs> Ray's always buying new stuff, man. And he's going to Academy tomorrow to get that six cents axis. So don't worry about Ray getting, you know, making new purchases. Man, Outdoor Pro Shop got me hyped up. I can't help but pull this back out, guys. Look at that. And it's clear. Like, it's, it looks more silvery to you guys, but this thing is translucent. I can see through this bait. That is BA. Freaking love this thing. So, for $8, again, I should have bought more. And I may very well just hop on online tonight and buy another one or two. This is a nice bait, guys, and it swims super naturally. Uh, Savage Gear does a good job of marketing, as you guys probably know. And you can see underwater footage of most of their baits online. So, like the 4D Pulse Tail Trout, for example, has a very realistic swim to it because that tail is just super subtle right but this guy on the other hand has more of a real swim to it so it's just a little bit more of a real swim this is a little bit more subtle whereas the 3d bluegill is erratic right this guy like i showed you guys the other night it actually swims pretty wide. Um, its course is like three inches wide. I'm not sure about this 3D trout. I don't think it veers too much. But of course, its kick is going to be wider than on the 4D pulse tail trout. So the 3D line through is one that I'm pretty jacked. To have alongside that 4D line through pulse tail. Savage gear swim baits are going to be the deal for me. And, um, and I'm happy about it. You know, a lot of people are all about Huddleston or other brands. And I'm relatively new to swim bait fishing, especially bigger baits and, and playing around. The odds of me putting in a significant amount of time into one bait uh, is just not super realistic. So for me to be able to try out baits at 10 and 20 bucks a pop um, or $8 in this case is super worth it. And now that I have the gear to be able to throw this pretty easily, uh, I'm excited to give it a shot. You know, under the right situations, I think a bait like this could really attract some big bites. And I know of a couple places right off the top of my head where I could pursue some five, six, and seven pound smallies here just less than an hour away from me. And, um, you know, an eight inch trout bait, I think could do the trick in getting the big ends to, to make a mistake. So BJ, I love this crew too.
Riley, you didn't really miss much, so no worries. Uh, racist Tyler, that's a bass on a drop shot. Using last year, using the Ned Fry. Uh, two this year on a Sea Rig with the Ned Fry. I think catches, I can say now confidently. Well, right on then. Uh, that makes me happy about the Ned Fry. What about making the Ned Fry into a French fry? Putting that on a Sea Rig, Ray. Just take two of the flat ends from the Ned Fry. Yeah, Ryan, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet swim baits for sure. No way. Cleaned a pike and it had a 14 inch trout in its belly. That's insane. BJ, the website is called Outdoor Pro Shop, but I left a link in the description of this video where you can click the link. And if you make a purchase there, I get a little kickback. So hook me up, bro. Click that link, Outdoor Pro Shop, but it's in the description of this video on YouTube. It's the only thing in the description. Copy paste that into your URL if the link itself doesn't work, but it should. <laughs> Ray's going to get in trouble. BJ, you're too nice. Um, but honestly, you got to pick your spots, you know. It can be really tempting and addicting to buy tackle like this, right? You know, when, like, I've already got a pack of the the Baby Rage Bugs and the, the Ned Bugs. But when they're on sale for so cheap, I couldn't help but just get another pack of each. And when I see the Savage Gear products for so cheap, can't help but try them out. And um, so that's part of how it goes in this game. But if you're in the market for other bigger fishing gear, you got to pick your spots really and uh, maybe try to stay disciplined and, and save up to get that reel that you're looking to get. But um, honestly, if you keep hanging out here long enough, somebody's going to send you a reel. So, uh, so I don't blame you either way, BJ. <laughs> Riley says, sounds like I need to hit the outdoor pro shop for me and Tyler. Uh, yeah. Tyler, you're talking to a guy who loves getting loose when I have the chance. Yeah, oh, well, I hear you for sure. <laughs> Ray, I hear you. After eight years in that constant matrix of always being in trouble for something with the misses, I tell you, I hear you. I am the same way. Eight years in, we've got our uh, our eight year wedding anniversary coming up here in a month from yesterday. I need to figure out what to do for that. Got to plan out something to do for Mother's Day and for our wedding anniversary. But uh, but yeah, once once you're in it long enough, you know part of part of being in a marriage um, is the fun of of fighting and getting over it, just pushing each other's buttons and all that stuff. So I wanted to rig a bait recently. on stream but didn't do that and uh i want to throw this bait asap so i'm just going to go ahead and rig one so that you guys can see what it looks like and uh and so i've got one ready to rock this is the scottsboro tackle five inch stc swimmer in the bluegill color i believe Five inch custom gill, they call the color. And I'm going to rig this on an owner flashy swimmer. 
If I can find it. Hmm. I don't even know if that's the right one, but I do. I like this gold blade a lot better. So, Ryan says, wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. Easy, guys. Ryan says, Sea Ray, more fishing stuff, more time you can fish. Give the mist more space. Well, you're right about that, Ryan. Ryan says, Taker Fishing. Yeah. Sounds like a, a good gift. BJ Taker Fishing. Riley, don't get her tackle for your eight years. <laughs> Quinn says, I've been a marriage therapist for 20 years. Don't miss the anniversary. I will not miss the anniversary, but thank you very much for the advice. Quinn, good to know you're a marriage therapist. Might have questions for you. In the future, Ron says the first 20 are the easy ones. Get her a dozen fire craw jackhammers arranged in a bouquet. Yeah, that's that's super romantic, dude. <laughs> Worth more than gold right now. They kind of are. So, I'm rigging this on the owner flashy swimmer, and tricky thing is, this flashy swimmer has a big CPS spring on it, okay? This, I believe, is the, the 5 aught or the 6 aught, but this is a big screw to go into the nose of this bait. So. Just trying to make sure that it goes in right and doesn't totally jack up the nose of this bait, which it can, and it's starting to already. So that's super disappointing. This is part of rigging baits, though, and, um, and it wouldn't be real if we didn't show this stuff, too. So give me a moment and some peace while I figure out how to rig this properly because I'm freaking out a little bit. See if that came out center and about where it should be. All right, so here is the custom gill rigged down the pipe on an owner flashy swimmer. This is the 5 aught, I believe, Colorado. And boy, it looks like I could bend that up a little bit, huh? Looks like I should bend it up a little bit. But I will say it's rigged properly. I just don't like that the belly doesn't come up all the way for the weight to be able to slide in there. And that's why I would prefer the trocar a lot of the time. But I don't think they make the trocar with the Colorado blade. So what would be interesting to try sometime would be to take like the take the trocar hook and swap the blade on it. And see uh, see how that works out. But anyway, I'm going to leave this one on. 
for now. And I'm going to fish it like this and see what the hookup ratio is like because this is a, a pretty collapsible soft plastic. And again, this fish is a lot like the um, the Mega Bass. Uh, the Magdraft Freestyle. Like, if you can see, that tail does not bend over a lot. But it has a pretty good thump to it. A nice kick. And uh, so at a medium speed retrieve, this thing is killer. And, um, you know, when it's super slow, this is not going to be the best bait to throw. But at medium and fast retrieves, this bait is killer. So keep that in mind. Um, the STC Scottsboro Tackle Swimmer is a good one. This is the 5-inch Custom Gill. I'm not quite sure about this hook, but I have to decide that at another time. And again, I'm glad I got the, the screw right on that second rigging because if I had to take that back out and screw it back in one more time, I think it would ruin the nose of the bait. So, BJ, let her have a day off. Take the kids fishing and give her the day off. Yep. Not a bad idea for sure. Riley says, always tell her how much you love them and grateful for them. That's what I do uh, for my 10 years worth of friendship. Well, you're right, Riley. It is important to tell everybody how much they mean to you. Um, I think that's the most important thing is just expressing your love in words, in writing. Uh, more so than than giving gifts and spending money uh you know is expressing your love for sure so very wise of you to say as a 16 year old but you're right wine and chocolate will definitely do the trick wine more so than chocolate on my wife for sure but you're right about that flowers flowers are always a good thing ryan says my wife said don't buy me any flowers if you're gonna get flowers Go somewhere and pick them this year. So I said, all right, fine. You could use mend it and re-rig the nose in that bait, says Brian. Um, to a certain extent, yes. Um, but when you're using a screw and trashing the bait that way, it's hard to repair it back to the way that it was before. Riley, your family call you an old soul. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, very wise beyond your years. So good for you, Riley. Thank you for the advice. Gosh, look at how tightly this is rigged. I feel like this needs a much deeper hook on it, like a 6 ot beast at the very least. But this is a, a flashy swimmer, and um, and I wanted the blade on there. This is a bluegill bait. I wanted the gold blade. So, whatever. Ray says, I love my wife, or I tell my wife I love her, and I get her flowers every time she finds the new gun or box of lures I got while she left me alone for more than two hours. I personally don't think she appreciates it, judging by her reaction. <laughs> Can't leave you alone. Ooh, <laughs> Ryan. What, so you get her flowers every day, Ray? Oh, pretty funny, pretty funny. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off here in a couple of minutes. And I know, Ray, it's going to upset you that we didn't get to two hours tonight. We didn't get to three hours the other night, and you were bummed about that. I know. 
Look at the size difference of the 4.8 inch versus the 5.8 inch Rage Slimmer. This 5.8 inch, 5.75 they call it, is a big hunk of plastic. It makes the 4.75 seem tiny. Uh, you know, just like a little skinny guy. The 5.75 is awesome. I'm a fan. Again, those ribs are a little different. It's like the mold was made differently. I, I doubt you guys can see that, but these ribs are much more uh, angled on the 4.75, and they're much flatter on the 5.75. But just an observation. I don't know how that's going to affect the swimming action on the bait. Riley says, that's what my mom and dad look like when I get more lures without them knowing. But to be honest, if I work for my money, I'll spend it on stuff that I love and earn. Yep, absolutely, Riley. Good for you. You spend your money on what you want so long as it's your money that you earned. Hey, Tyler, as long as we can have some time on the stream, it's worth it with y'all. And like I said, tomorrow, hopefully, we will be back on. I would love it if in the next few minutes, you guys, me, you guys give me suggestions on what you'd like to talk about tomorrow night. And, uh, and we can make it a little bit more of a substantial topic and, uh, and have somewhat of an agenda to go off of. So. Ryan, I am not going on the fishing trip. I don't think you were in here when I said that it got canceled, dude. Friday, I'm supposed to be going fly fishing to that private piece of property. But um, Friday, the 1st of May, was going to be the first day that that property is open. And the flows um, on that stretch of river are super, super low right now. Um, like way lower than average. And the owner does not feel comfortable opening the property up to the public uh, just for the sake of quality of fishing. So we're not going to be going fishing on Friday. Uh, I might be going fishing somewhere else, pursuing bass, um, as opposed to fly fishing for trout. But we'll see about that. Drew 2430, rage swimmer looking juicy AF. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, that electric shad color is banging. Ryan, have a good night, everybody. Good luck if you're able to go fishing. See you on the next stream. Absolutely. And Ray, don't get into too much trouble. <laughs> Brian wants to talk about top water. Oh, Brian, you get me every time with the top water. Although, hey, I'm open to talking about it now. I'm over that that game now that we're we're really into the thick of pre-spawn. Starting to think about spawn and post spawn top water is uh it's not so far away we can talk about it man not the end of the world uh riley says flukes and top water alex says you should do a q a tomorrow um you know i feel like most of the streams are like a q a so um uh, more and more we can do that you know we can just go with the flow and let people ask questions and i can answer and then catch up with where the the chat is at once i finish ranting but um sometimes it's nice to have a real topic and uh and stuff to to run through for the first hour or so of the stream but riley says flukes in top water um uh, yeah ryan it is too bad but hopefully i will i'll still be going fishing somewhere on friday full life adventure says top water okay Drew says, X-Zone Swammers sold out everywhere. What's the deal with those? Uh, good question. I don't think there's there's too much of a deal with them. They've been out for a long time now. Uh, just starting to make them in slightly different sizes. But uh, it's mostly that X-Zone has gotten a couple of uh, – they've done their marketing right in the last year. 
Uh, first of all, they got Brandon Palinek on their pro staff, and then they've been getting a bunch of um, social media influencers involved in their brand too. So Exxon has really been doubling down on marketing, getting their stuff out there. But their swimmers, it's just a soft plastic swim bait with a flat top instead of rounded over. And um, Exxon in general makes great drop shot baits and finesse lures, a lot of soft plastics. And uh, so it's a paddle tail swim bait with like a little bit of uh, segmenting to it, but nothing crazy, honestly. I don't know what, what the deal is with them, Drew. Ryan wants to talk about spinner baits. Uh, Ron says lines, differences between lines. Ray says dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery is how I roll. Oh, who am I kidding? I spoil my son worse than anyone. I swear I'd never do that. Yeah, isn't that how it always goes though, man? We do more for our kids than we say we would. BJ says, I think you should tell us how you fish this month's giveaway baits. That's not a bad idea. Alex, have a good night, everyone. You too, Alex. Thanks for, for hanging out tonight. There's 21 people still in here right now. Pretty crazy to think. Riley says, my shoulder not ready for the giant, for the great top water bite, even though uh, I used it. Frog made me realize it's a hard bite. Yeah, you do have to set that hook. Your shoulder's going to be making you pay for it for a while. Mine, too. I didn't tell you guys that I ate it uh, a week or two ago in my garage. Messed up my shoulder, but don't need to talk about that. Hey, Jack, you have a good night. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. Pleasure to have you in here. Um, have a good night's rest. Have a good day tomorrow. We'll see you on the next one, okay? Ryan says, I believe with X-Zone, you're seeing them in the States more because they've grown big enough in Canada to justify getting into the U.S. markets. Uh, they've been in the U.S. market for a little while now, but definitely uh, doubling down on what they're doing in the States for sure. Brian says, would like to see how you go about bending the hooks out on a frog and how far out you go. Cool. All right, so some decent suggestions here, guys. Um, some of these are just shorter ones that we could talk about on an average stream, but um, but some might be worth talking about. It looks like flukes and topwaters might be one of the top options, as would be how to fish the giveaway baits from this month. So I will keep those at the top of the list. If you guys have other suggestions, Feel free to leave a comment um, on this video after it ends, after it processes. Also, go check the link in the description of this video. Click that link and go check out Outdoor Pro Shop and see some of those deals they have going on. Strike King Soft Plastics in particular and Savage Gear. Just pretty much all the Savage Gear baits are ridiculously cheap right now. There are some other good deals on the website too, but... I will let you guys know about those at another time. So I'm going to dip out of here, but uh, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys tonight. Ray says, spinnerbait, I second. Keep putting them in carts and then taking them out. Can't decide. Yep, fair enough. Um, so we'll talk about spinnerbaits another time. Not my most favorite thing to discuss, so probably not going to be the topic tomorrow night. But if you guys have suggestions, leave those in the comment section below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do that. Hit the thumbs up on this video. I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow night. Have a good night. See you soon. Bye.